Good evening. My name is Mary Maslowski. I'm the chairperson of the Harwich uh, Historic District and Historical Commission. Uh, I'm calling to order the meeting of Wednesday, January 16th, 2019 at 6 p.m. here in the Don B. Griffin Room at 732 Main Street in Harwich. Um, as required by state law, the town uh, is notifying you that we may audio or video record this meeting. Any person also intending to either audio or video record the open session is required to inform the chair at this time. Hearing none, um, I'd like to start with a roll call. Uh, Jean Steiner. Bob Dome. Gail Carroll. Julie Eldridge. All right, our first item on the agenda is a public hearing. I'd like to call to order the public hearing HH2019-01, the Certificate of Appropriateness, which has been received for 724 Main Street, identified as Verizon, map 41, parcel B8-1 in the C-V zone in the Harwich Center Historic District. The application proposes to upgrade existing generators, install new roof-mounted uh, AC unit, and surround the flat roof with a white vinyl three-and-a-half-foot fence, modernize and replace existing west elevation louver, and install an eight-foot cedar fence surround and replace the exhaust stack. The application is pursuant to, the, to Master to Law Chapter 40C, Section 6, and the Code of the Town of Harwich, Chapter 131, Historic Preservation, Article 1. Donald Ambrosio, Nelson Architects, is applicant for the owner, 9X uh, slash New England uh, Telephone and Telegraph Company. Please come forward <laughs> and state your name for the record. Uh, Donald Ambrosio, and Nelson Architects. Thank you. Do you want me to sit or do you have a However you are comfortable. <laughs> Whichever is the easiest way for you to give us your sure. presentation. Um, so I can hold up things and other people are interested, but um, so my name is Don Ambrosio with uh, Nelson Architects on behalf of Verizon, who um, just two buildings down on 724 mm -hmm. Main Street, they have a central office building, they have a telephone exchange, and um, I'm, so I, I'm sure everybody here knows the secret building down there, right? Um, so um, that building basically, I don't know if you've ever been inside of it, but it's just a bunch of telephone equipment that all the telephone lines come in and go out through that building. Every town generally has one of these buildings, um, just like there's a fire station and a police station. So they're a public utility building. Um, as part of uh, that telephone service, here. as part of that telephone service, um, there's other features in the building. Um, there's your normal telephone dial tone. There can be, uh, if you have FiOS down here and things like that, all that would go through that building as well as uh, E911 calls. So it's actually a critical facility. We can't lose it. <laughs> so in general, um, in all Verizon buildings, what they do is inside the building, generally they have a, sometimes it's outside, but uh, there'll be an emergency generator. And if they lose power to the building, the generator automatically kicks on, ensures that they don't lose the telephone service. Um, so if they didn't have that, that generator, uh, the space might heat up and you could actually lose 911 and everything. So in every building it's required that they have generator and actually a backup to the generator that they could wheel in if they needed to. We just can't lose telephone service. So um, in this building on the, um, let's see, if you're facing the building, on the left hand side of the building uh, behind this window is where the generator is. It's on the left hand side of the building as you're facing it. So on the side of the building there's a louver and the generators have to get cooled so right now th there's an old generator in there that's I think about 100 kilowatts and it blows its air out that louver and uh, it's been there you know for many years and it only runs in the event of a power outage or once a month they test it for 30 minutes so it's just required um, I think by the FCC or something like that so <laughs> Um, you probably don't even know it's there, but for the most part, when there's a power outage, it'll kick on and it's, it sounds kind of like a truck a little bit, d depending on how big it is. This one's pretty small. Um, Verizon has to upgrade this generator because the old one is, is seen its better days and also can't hurt, can't handle the current load of the building as well as the air conditioning required to cool the telephone equipment. So we're replacing it with a 175 kW generator, which really isn't much bigger. Um, it fits right in the room nicely. Um, it requires a little more airflow, but what we do 
is um, when we do these generator projects, and I do a lot of them engineering-wise, um, we have to make sure that the air flow is correct, but also we have to make sure that the generator is not going to be too noisy. So with that, it's kind of a double-edged sword. We have to do things to make it so that it's not going to bother anybody and any noise. So uh, part of the plan is on that left side of the building, um, which is here. And uh, I think I have a better plan of that. Uh, yeah, this is a roof plan. In the elevations, if you're facing the building on the left-hand side, we're reusing the existing louver, except we're going to, right now, it's uh, nine and a half feet high, almost 10 feet high, it drops down, and then there's a wood panel at the bottom. We're going to replace the whole piece with the louver because we need that for the airflow. And um, so it'll just be, a, right now it's a white louver, and it'll be a white louver again. It'll just actually go down lower than it does now. Um, but in order to kind of further mitigate the sound, and we bring in an engineer who takes these readings to make sure we comply with all regulations, um, the engineer uh, wants to have us put a fence outside of it, and the inside of the fence would be lined with basically just plywood and an acoustical panel so that when the generator uh, is on, that'll absorb any of the sound to keep it to those thresholds that we need. Um, architecturally, I thought it would be better to have um, something that looks less industrial and just do it as a, we, we do have to have it solid because you can't let the sound go through the slats. So we were gonna do it as a cedar board fence, eight foot high with, with cedar posts, um, little colonial caps on the posts. You wouldn't see the plywood and the acoustical panels, they'd be on the inside and they would screen eight of the 10 foot of the louver, so you actually wouldn't even see much of the louver. But we would, we would just have that, that fence that comes out about six feet or so, goes back about another eight feet and comes back to the building. It's, it's not a huge thing, but visually you can see it from Main Street, so that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, hopefully that's not a deal breaker. There is some existing shrubberies in front of it and a lot of trees between Horizon and the adjacent um, complex to the left of it. That would bring uh, the, the existing generator, which again, these don't run all the time, it's just very rarely, mm -hmm. um, actually like 18 decibels quieter than the old generator. So it's even better than uh, what, what it is now. Usually the older generators were put in a long time ago before we worried so much. <laughs> um, the second thing we're doing is we're bringing in the return air that, cool, that comes across the generator from above the roof. Uh, because we can't really mix the two airs. And so up at the, uh, in the front of the building, there's a, there's a pitch roof, cable roof, and it's higher. And then there's a flat roof in the back of the building where there's currently some air conditioning equipment. And we're gonna put this acoustic box for the intake air there that gets brought in to cool it out on the roof. It's, it's low to the roof, it's only three feet high. It'll pop in. Um, and then the second thing we're gonna do on the roof is that we have to add an air conditioner, which is just like, there's some existing condenser, air conditioning condensers on the roof now, uh, right in the middle on the flat roof. We'll be putting this a little closer to the front, pop into the pitch roof from the back, which you wouldn't be able to see from the street. And then that runs down into the generator room. Um, my concern would be, um, you know, there's, there's some equipment up there and these are probably three and a half feet high, maybe four feet high, depending on the curb size. Um, at certain angles coming up Main Street in our historic district, you could, right now you can kind of almost see some of that equipment. Mm -hmm. In the summer, there's a lot of trees, so you never would. So I was suggesting that we do a three and a half foot high, um, almost like a you know, balustrade type fence around the top that you see in many historic districts. Um, it's not required for acoustics, it's strictly, um, I thought that since we were in such a um, highly historical area that you might want that. If, if you think that it's overkill or you'd rather not see, you know, the, it's gonna, it, from the street now, you're gonna see the three and a half, five foot open rail fence like you see, like a balustrade type thing. Um, it would be white. Um, we prefer to make it out of a vinyl because um, we found in the past that the maintenance of these you know, if we paint it, they don't always maintain it as much. Um, and we think the vinyl would maintain its appearance over time, you know, forever. So I think you'd have better luck with not having to see an old wood fence that the paint's peeling. This would actually be 
Um, we don't have to do it for acoustical. We don't have to do it for any other reason other than I thought there's so much equipment up there now that we might prefer that. If you think that it's overkill, you know, buyers would be happy. Uh, but, and I don't really, if I just drove it down the street one more time, uh, you, you, you can barely see it if you're, you know, unless you're really paying attention. And um, so I thought I would offer it as something that would be a suggestion if you think it's necessary. And if you just don't want to see this white fence on the roof because nobody else is doing it around here, I'd, I'm fine to tell Verizon we could scrap it. <laughs> uh, I put some pictures on the presentation of the, you know, of the building. It's you know, a fairly okay looking building. Uh, I think they maintain it. The bushes are nicely trimmed. Um, the only other thing we have to do is that in the front of the building, there's an existing little stack that pops up. It's metal. We just have to replace it with the new one because the old one is uh, one inch diameter too small. Otherwise, the exhaust won't work. So we're going to basically replace it in the same thing and paint it uh, black so that it just sort of blends up there. I don't think we're going to notice anything different than the one that, that's there now, to be honest. But I wanted to bring it to your attention because it does affect the appearance of the front of the building. And that's about it. Thank you. Are there uh, any questions from members of the board? Um, you want to go? <laughs> um, the new air conditioning unit, uh, you think that's going to be about, what, four feet high? Yeah, it's, it's three feet high, but we have to put it, um, unfortunately, the back of that roof, when they did the addition, um, they used wood plank mm -hmm. for the deck. And so we have to put a little steel support at the bottom to sort of just keep it to right. the steel. So it'll end up being closer to four feet um, to the top of it where, like, the fan comes up. Right. Now, I noticed that the existing ones are put in the center of the roof uh, for good reason, because you can't see them from the street. Mm -hmm. Why can't this one be moved into the middle of the building? Um, it had to do with uh, the framing of that gable roof. At the front where you have the, the, the opposite angle, mm -hmm. um, we couldn't get the ductwork to go in the right direction to get into the roof. So it, where it is from left to right as you're facing the building, had to do with the, the framing of the roof and what's up there now. There's some stuff up there. So we couldn't pop in uh, towards the center anymore. Um, I think the we had a similar situation with on the left hand, uh, on the other side of that thing, mm -hmm. we had a similar situation where, where we had to pop out was based on whatever that framing and structure was in there. So we're trying to keep it to the middle, but that was about the best we could do structurally. Um, you know, I don't know that we can cheat it anymore. I think we tried. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, that, that I have a, I do have a problem with that because be, see, I mean, I'd rather see stuff in the middle and no fence because the fence almost attracts. Mm -hmm. It makes it mm -hmm. makes yeah. it one. Yeah. <laughs> What's there? Um, and I'd rather see that in the middle. And um, even if you had to squirrel the duct work some angles to get it into the building. Well, that's what I could suggest to them is if we could keep the ducts where they are. And this is me going back to Verizon, right. but I, I think we could probably get this to work. We keep the ducts where they are popping into the roof, then they come out, and what we could do is extend the steel towards the middle and have them make an L shape towards the middle and do a similar thing with that other, that other duct. Mm -hmm. And I, I bet you Verizon would be, uh, you know, I can guarantee Verizon would mm -hmm. be amenable to that if it meant we didn't have to do the fence, <laughs> I yeah. guess. Um, and and it's, the, it's a noise thing, too, I mean, because when it's close to the edge of the roof, that's going to affect the Albro house. That's true. Because that, that's a, those conventions get pretty noisy, and this looks like a much bigger one than the existing ones. This is actually, yeah, those are a just condenser. This is actually an air conditioning unit, so it's, it's got everything in it. Right, so it's even noisier because it's got the compressor and it's, uh, yeah. Yes, it, I, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I guess it does have the compressor in it. You're right, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing I uh, thing is is the fence. Um, I don't. I mean, I appreciate you want to put the fence there for the noise for the neighbors, mm -hmm. but I don't think. I mean, I don't feel that the cedar fencing is appropriate for the property at all. It's a whole different period and everything like that. I I'd rather see a more formal white fence. Okay. Um, a white that's a wood solid. Fence. Yeah, and it, and it has to be when we. I mean, I'm, I think we're pretty adamant there's no vinyl in this historic district. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can use ASIC and, or ASAC, some of the other materials, as long as it's paintable. Right. Um, but 
I, I was going to, my question was sort of fed into okay, that, well, which was, yeah. what about instead of the fence, if you increased the plantings there, would that not also, well, this are is you the required thing. to have the fence? Oh. Uh, by Massachusetts Department of Environmental, Environmental Protection, mm -hmm. okay. you, you, you have to be within, you, you can't be any louder than 10 decibels in, higher than ambient. Uh, it's the law. Mm -hmm. So the only way to get it to work is with this physical fence thing to sort of cut <coughs> down on noise. Yeah. Um, they're required to do that and they have to do it on another project. But we could also add some shrubbery. You know, we could do two things. We could do the fence. Mm -hmm. You're just talking about a white painted fence? Yeah, That's yeah, something to solid, yeah, something, maybe home. some work around the top that might be mm -hmm. appropriate for the period. I yeah. mean, the, I love the bells carved into the side shingles. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty unique. Um, but not necessarily have that, but <laughs> <laughs> just saying, it does make it, it interesting anyways. Yeah. Well, we could do, you know, the, the post can have a, a cap on them. It's mm -hmm. nice looking. And then the top of the boards would have a piece of trim on them to right. trim them off nicely. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so, some some towns I know uh, prefer to leave it weathered, you know, just mm -hmm. to, to sort of turn gray to weather. And other time, towns prefer to have it painted. And painting's not a problem at all. If you paint it white, I'd be perfectly happy to do that. Um, it does have to be eight feet, though. You can have a sound mm -hmm. problem. Um, even though it's dramatically quieter than the old one, right. we have to pretend the old one doesn't exist and pretend that we're putting a new one in right. that existed before. <laughs> just the law. <laughs> um, so that's... You know, absolutely. That's not a problem at all. So, any other questions? Mine is about if we have to have an eight foot fence, it's going to be high, so it would take a while for shrubbery to hide it. What about doing like some kind of trellising on it with something green and growing on it? Could we do that? Would that go? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean yeah. on the uh, trellis, yeah. but, but no, you, you put in some shrubs. You, you get some pretty good? fast growing yeah. shrubs. Okay. Yeah. Just like Maven Cypress and stuff. Yeah, like yeah they, go, <laughs> they go like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my, my concern a lot of times is just having, uh, when we put these types of shrubs out here, I can just put them in, maintain them, and you know, go. Right. If you try to grow something on a fence, yeah. They're yeah. a big company and they have a lot of buildings and yeah, right. I feel like they don't take care of Yeah, okay. <laughs> I get that. They're not here, so I can say that. But uh, <laughs> I try to outsmart them by what like they don't normally do. Something that would look good five years from now when I drive by, I'm like, it's <laughs> a good idea, though. It's um, not a building that has a regular maintenance staff on it. That's no. gonna Somehow in these pictures, the <laughs> shrubs are nicely trimmed, and I'm like, how did they pull that off? <laughs> is there anybody in that building? No, I don't think nobody, nobody there works in there, but you'll see technicians coming. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, 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 it's been covered. Mm. I, I <laughs> would prefer the white. I think yeah. that would be yeah. more in keeping with the style of the building. And the noise was an issue as far as, you know, what I was thinking. But you seem to have that captured. Mm -hmm. And um, and then just moving that air conditioner to the center would, I would think, mitigate the issue of noise from that. I mean, you can hear it probably. But You'll not, hear it. But, but it won't be as, as much as if it yeah. were right on the edge. So well, he studied that too, so that's going to comply to that air conditioner. Mm -hmm. So if we push in, it'll be that much better. Right. It'll be even better. Um, so we have specified a unit that doesn't make too much noise, but you know, you know how it is. You have a bunch of units running in the summertime. Yeah. You end up running a little more. Okay, so I'll, I'll um, tell them that we want to do that. We want to push in the middle, and then we so we don't want to bother with the fence around the roof. Okay. I, I, I don't see. I think if the unit can be moved, yeah. 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 I think it would attract the attention of people. Well, that's what I mean. Then people start staring at it. Uh, that's the way I showed it because I thought we should talk about it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want it, it's not, not required for any other reason. Is it possible to come back with a um, elevation, um, a simulation of what it would look like mm -hmm. from the street, not without the fence, but with the equipment there? On the uh, from the east, particularly the east, well, both sides, east and west. Well, like uh, as a drawing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it would be help. My next question for you was going to be: Would you be amenable to coming back to our next meeting, which right. we're generally the third Wednesday of every month? Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, February twentieth. If you um, are amenable to a continuance until then, would that give you enough time to to attempt to re-engineer the the um, air conditioning duct and get us some revised? 
drawing so that we can um, take a look and and then uh, move forward with uh, finalizing the the application. We can do that. Um, I, Verizon, I think, would like to order the generator. That's the only hold up I have on my end is that they it has some lead time, and the longer we go without a, s a generator big enough, um, is the air, it sounds like the air conditioner is the biggest matter at the moment. Well, and and the fence. So we look at we look at the fence. Right, yeah. and the fence. The fence so on the it's really just the fence that would would be we're okay. concerned with. We know the generator is going to be ordered. Yeah, but I mean, we, we don't have an issue with that, no, but the fence, it, we it just need to have the fence look good the fencing. And, and, the, and the rooftop. Right. Yeah, I can definitely come back and we, so I, thought, I think your thought is then we would show uh, an additional elevation. If you could. From the other yeah. side. Mm -hmm. And there would be sides. no fence and we would but show. But you'd show what they kind of look like from that you, side. You yeah. want it from um, a perspective of. Um, Street view. In other words, you want to be able to see what you're going to see as you're standing, or just a general straightforward elevation with a rectangle on little pieces. I, of I, since we our purview is really street view, right, yeah. probably at a, a good um, angle away. So mm -hmm. when you first would approach the building, first time you could see that part of the roof, that view on both sides. Okay, because we could do like a line of sight type thing yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. So if we are all in agreement to continue until the 20th, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to continue this public hearing until 6 p.m. on February 20th. I move to continue the hearing uh, until, uh, what day is it, the 20th? 20th. February 20th. 20th. And that's HH 2018-09. Oh, it's 209. Oh, one. Right. Yeah, it's the first one. Oh, one. It's the very first one. <laughs> so motion's been made uh, by Mr. Doan. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Carroll. To continue the public hearing until February 20th at 6 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion is unanimous. Thank you very much. We look forward Thank to seeing you, you back. Okay, please. All right, the next item on our agenda is uh, an informal discussion with Mr. David Spitz about <laughs> Brooks Academy Museum. Let's do it. Wonderful. And I've got a little bit of a show and tell, so I'm hoping this is going to work. <laughs> do you have enough room? Okay. If you want to sit at the end of the table, table David, you're, yeah. you're welcome to. Welcome. And we're going to see if this works. I tend to be a bit of a peak on paper, so I have not seen any copies of my today. Um, we've got a fairly lengthy Brooks Academy Museum report prepared by Berto and I were <laughs> um, architects from Boston. We selected them <coughs> in approximately May or June to do this work. This was a CPC-funded project from about five years ago, $30,000 to do a study of museum improvements. start doing something up. Wow, that's a good sign already. Yeah. All right. Do you want the lights down? Would you think if we dim the lights, would it be better? Uh, I can't really turn off the lights. Oh. Okay. 
Oh, okay. I, I, I thought you were going to tell me that. <laughs> That's something the town needs to address because it makes it much harder for the people in the room <laughs> for the benefit of the TV audience. But I'll try not to soapbox too much. <laughs> The architects have worked with the five-member Brooks Museum Commission and several representatives of the Historic Society and Janet, who was employed by them. Um, and we worked on this. We had two or three meetings with the architects through the summer and fall. We got a draft set of recommendations in September, which were beautiful and turned out to be expensive. <laughs> and most of this report is actually on the larger package of improvements. Um, thinking that it was going to be difficult for this building to raise a million and a half to do the wish list project, we asked them to show us a smaller version, which is what I'm going to be describing to you. We're just doing this informally uh, because we have applied to CPC for funding, as two of you know. Um, and you, you guys can <coughs> do whatever help you can tomorrow night, and it may not be enough. <laughs> <coughs> but um, in any case, uh, the CPC chair asked me to come before you before finishing up with this. So, so we're doing that. The architect has restated the objectives that we gave them, which were number one, expanded on-site collection storage. And I apologize for the angle of this and the difficulty of the reading. Mostly I'm going to be showing you pictures and then I'll be doing the reading from this. But um, expanded on-site collection storage, Janet can describe what's going on right now better than I can. But there is storage uh, in boxes, on shelves, et cetera, in areas that cannot be considered um, climate controlled for anything close to museum standards. The proposal is to use the basement. The full proposal was to excavate onto the entire building and to have a larger storage area that would serve the needs for the foreseeable future. That proved to be too expensive. So now the proposal and the addendum that I'll get to hopefully not too long um, is going to use just the existing basement and to create a climate controlled space in there. Now, there are cl climate con control can mean a lot of different things, but it's, it's going to be far a, a, a considerable improvement over what is there now. And, and I'll try to give you at least the, the rudiments of the description. Let me just say at the outset, an awful lot of what I'm going to show you is not, I don't believe in your purview, because a lot of it is interior. Mm -hmm. But there are a few things that are exterior, and I think it just helps to go through the whole thing to just explain the context of what we're looking at. The accessible vertical circulation. The existing basement is not accessible. The second floor is uh, there is a motorized chairlift that I'm told gets used once in a blue moon and is really not particularly user friendly for a mu museum type of setup. So we are proposing an elevator. We're actually proposing a Lula, uh, low limited use, limited access, which is basically a very small elevator. It is not a lift, which is what they have in the South Harwich Meeting House because that goes only from first to second floor. This one is proposed to go from basement to first floor to second, so we can't get the, do the less expensive lift, but we can do this limited use, limited access. The proposal is to use the entryway, and I'm going to show a floor plan in a little while. Uh, in other words, the public comes in at that sort of back entrance off the ramp, and that's going to be closed off under this plan, and that is where the elevator will go in the inside of that space. This architect, fortunately, does have some historic experience. They actually have more museum experience than historic, but they had enough historic experience to be dangerous. And they were insistent as we went through this that the elevator should not be added to the outside of the building. So I think we didn't look at anything on the outside of the building, so that's good. A previous plan, Bob, mm. you're probably familiar, right. did show it on the outside of the right. building. Um, and lastly, exterior envelope maintenance 
the, shall evaluate the existing condition in the building as addressed in previous study, structural adequacy, including the building foundation, exterior windows, exterior siding, and columns. Now, I will say on the building foundation, that's where I've run into some problems, and this may be jumping the gun. The architect's opinion was that the building foundation is sound based on visual inspection. That finding has not proved to be satisfactory to the town administration. Uh, and I work mostly with Sean Libby, the building's maintenance supervisor, um, and they feel we need to have a structural analysis done. So that's one of the main difficulties in going forward with the project that we submitted to CPC, is that the town administration has only partially supported what we're trying to do. So let me just keep going. Um, Existing conditions, let me just mention for those of you who are not familiar, the original building was built in 1844, was lengthened in 1909, and a second edition was built in 1927 to create an L shape. So the most historic part of it is under the columns facing to the north. We are proposing to reestablish the entrance, the historic entrance in that direction. It would be on the left hand, uh, between the two left hand columns, and it would simply require changing the ramp, or maybe replacing the ramp, I'm not sure yet, so that it goes up from the parking lot as shown on that picture, and instead of turning right into the existing entrance, it would be turning right into an elevator, so that's gonna be a solid wall now, and instead the ramp will now jog just a little bit to the left, continue along the base of that uh, portico, or whatever the right word is, <coughs> uh, and go into the building at that point. There are a couple of tricky accessibility things that have to be dealt with in that that it won't uh, have much to do with anything, of, uh, won't have any visual, visible visual significance, but it will handle the accessibility requirements. There's also a little bit of work that they are proposing at the base of those columns. Those columns were redone about 10 years ago. This architect is somewhat, is mildly critical of how it was done and is suggesting something else in this report and if there are any questions about that, I'll, I'll try to find the right place in the report to give those details. They've talked about a number of existing conditions. The foundation walls is extremely important and what they said mainly needs to be done is that water has to be directed in a better fashion away from the building that requires ideally a, um, an expanded gutter system. The architects have re rec recommended a copper gutter system, which will be expensive, but that's still part of what we're trying to do. Um, and, um, and I think that's about all I have to say about that. They consider that to be a pretty high priority. Foundation walls. So there's simply some pictures showing some of the existing foundation. And you know, I don't think there are major problems, but there are issues. There's some things that have to be repointed, repaired, repointed, again, whatever the right words are there. Um, and they're suggesting this can best be done after a better job is done in directing water away from the building. I'm skipping, I'm not reading through all of this. I'll be skipping through a little bit. Okay, siding and trim. The biggest concern from anybody driving by right now is the east side. And there's a lot of peeling going on there, and that may be uh, because of the heating duct shafts. That w it says, okay, let me, I'm gonna read th that paragraph that says east. Um, I don't have a pointer with me. It's under the first one under recommendations. I'm simply gonna read that. Large portions of this side of the main building are peeling and should be scraped and prepared for repainting. 
I'll just stop for a minute. There is enough lead paint there that th to this point the painting has been done by the county prisoners and that's fine unless you have to scrape lead paint. And since now we've got to the point where there's enough to be scraped that we cannot have them do it. So we have to get more into a library type of situation which again is going to be fairly expensive. Um, the areas where clapboards are bulging out should be investigated for causes and repaired as feasible. This may entail interior renovations to the heating duct shaft and this exterior walls. Dialogue between the architects and Sean Libby have not yet yielded a clear answer as to exactly why that uh, flaking off that, that s stuff is going on, but the, the problem with the heating duct seems to be a likely culprit. So that's what we have to look at more carefully. Mm. Let's pick this up. Oh, okay. So this is one of our. This is one of the things that's in in your purview. <coughs> the top left photo showing a door. The proposal in previous reports and again in this one is to replace that door which is not being used with a window unit similar to what you see in that picture. Seems like a very sensical, relatively simple proposal. All right, columns. I thought this was the page where I was going to find out the base of the columns, what they were recommending, but I'm not seeing it for the moment. So I'll come back to that if I find it. Re recreation by the column base. <coughs> Where's it here? Just bear with me. Paragraph. <coughs> no, there's something else, but that, that's part of it. But in any case, um, I think a number of you are familiar with the. Where is it? Sorry, and bear with me. Columns should not. Okay, so um, lower left is pretty typical of, of visually, this is scaring a lot of people. Uh, the town engineering office, which oversaw the work 10 years ago, said structurally that's just fine. This architect doesn't completely agree and said that there are some techniques to make that better. There are just some, dis this is where I was looking for my description. Um, the new column and base system has not completely solved the water problem as now both the bases and column bottoms are damp, which is leading to peeling paint and wood softening. Redesign the column bases to pitch away from the columns, minimizing the de degree to which water can accumulate at the bottom of each column. Consideration may also be given to a custom carved stone base as a way to improve durability. We haven't really talked about that yet. Um, I'm not sure that we would get into that. So I guess what I'm pointing out at this preliminary basis is there is a recommendation on the columns. <coughs> wouldn't have a huge visual impact. Hopefully it would take me away, take, get rid of that wear and tear that is very visible at the bottom of those columns. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So I'm largely going through what to deal with, how to deal with the existing building right now, other than, um, well, changing the ramp is part of the improvements, but then that one door 
uh, which would become a window, and the work on the columns are really the main things that I could think of um, that you know m might be coming under the under your uh, jurisdiction. And this is simply to show that they spent some uh, time thinking about the historic district and paying <laughs> attention to it. And their specific recommendations that they felt related to the district was restore the north portico to its original function and character as the building's main entrance, insert an accessible elevator within the footprint of the newest addition of the building annex, uh, this, it, this is internal, remove storage and facility uses from historic spaces in the original 1844 Academy. They had a number of recommendations on floor plan, which didn't meet with immediate um, approval of the historic society. And we may not be actually going forward with a lot of that. A lot of it is redoing walls and so forth where the expense started to build up. We do know we want to move the main storage area to the basement. Beyond that, any floor plan issues are, are uncertain stabilize and preserve the historic collection of the historical society, including the building itself, without impact, that's a nice sense, without impacting the original character. Of course, they better say something like that. <laughs> All right, page 41. Nice picture. I don't know if you can see the people there. That's before the additions, too. Yeah, that was way back. Concept design. Oh, okay, I'm just simply showing this in case somebody can figure out how to help me get one and a half million. This <laughs> is um, excavating the entire basement and creating a, a very nice uh, research and storage area for use of the. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think it's basically going to make us Atwood House light. Or maybe not light, but in any case, this ain't happening at least for now. Um, full basement option, share collective. Okay, and I'm going to flip through to get to the reduced scope. This, these are pictures of the storage area, which I guess are better on my computer than, than you can see up there. We went through a whole bunch of different type of items and sensitivity across the top. So for example, uh, audiovisual, clothing and textiles, documents with a, a necessary say on it, uh, books, etc. The criteria they compared these all to were light, humidity, temperature, air pollutants, storage stresses, etc. So they did this sort of matrix analysis of all the storage needs. Mainly to show us how good they were. I don't know. Um, a lot of issues we've been talking about with Sean Libby concerning building systems. And Lula Elevator. Some mostly internal again. Fairly detailed cost information, which we're not going through with, with you folks. And um, I'll let CPC worry about that. And the code summary, which is important and which should be looked at in more detail at some point. So the reduced scope identifies the main, there's three main things that we are trying to go forward with. Um, establishing the climate controlled space in the basement, putting in the Lula elevator, and moving the entrance to the north side of the building. In addition to those three, there are various building uh, maintenance items that we have to <coughs> deal with, um, including very expensively now, the lead paint issue. And Sean did just recently test it, so. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. And basement storage, number two, restoration, number three, rehabilitation, number four. These, these are the areas that we're working under. So in terms of floor plan, let me 
we'll just go to those. Okay. So I think this is as good a summary as any as to what we're doing. Number one is the ramp. So that goes up. That existing part of it, again, may be replaced, but the location is exactly what's there now. It now bends to the left and then dog legs to the right uh, to get under the columns and goes up to that second door, the one near the top, and that's the new entrance. Number two is that column area. Number three is they just say new entrance, gift shop, whatever. Uh, number five is the location of the elevator. And number eight outside, they have to add for the climate control in the basement, there's uh, five little squares. The top square is new, it's shaded a little, which you can't see, and uh, that's because of the um, air conditioning or the air treatment requirements in the basement. And they, the architect says that'll be s screened by the landscaping that you see there. There's some landscaping there now, so with the, with taking out that piece of ramp, there's a little room for some additional landscaping. Okay, so here's the basement plan, and uh, number 10 becomes the largest room available for storage. It's showing two U-shaped storage shelving units. Uh, there's a secure storage right below number 11 uh, that says secure storage, so that has a door, and that would be one extra level of control. Uh, the, that is created by reducing the area devoted to the boiler in number 11. There's a mechanical room in, in including some new items at number 12. So I think basically that's it. And be glad to respond to anything you, you have. So just, I'm still curious, why um, are you moving the entrance doorway to the left as you face it as opposed to the door to the right? I don't have a good answer for that. Do you? I didn't know it was going to be the left until you just mentioned that because we never use the door on the left. Right. Except as a fire exit. It, it does open and, and you can get through it. Yeah. Through it. I'm just curious if there was historical no. nature of that because I, a lot of pictures you show mostly the right-hand door is used. Well, I may have, mi I I may have misunderstood because I was just looking back through and I, don't, I may have misunderstood that point. Okay. I'm not 100% sure that which door. I suspect that both doors were used originally yeah. because one leads to the stairs in the upper room. Right. And that was originally where the men were and the women were downstairs. And then they switched. Mm -hmm. I'll look into that. I wonder if it wasn't right. because of the placement of the gift shop so that you were coming yeah, in that's and what I was by say. the gift <laughs> shop. <laughs> yeah, so it may have less no, historical you, you don't right. realization. You don't really want. More right. just because yeah. of, of uh, the location of that particular room. Architect has done a lot of work with museums. That's usually something that's, <laughs> that, that's right. what I that's, that's what I thought it was, but I don't I don't know. It, it just makes it more complicated with the handicap going all the way across yeah. the front porch right. and everything and turning radius we can and look stuff. Into that. But the only thing I can think of was that it gave more room for a chair to turn than it would if you came well, into the be. right mm -hmm. the first door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That can be cleared up easily. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know that's a minor that's not even decided now. That's I do like thing. the idea of the front door. <laughs> um, uh, did Bob? you? No. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, I, I just got that email with all Sean Libby's um, thing. I mean, that like blows away tomorrow night, doesn't it? I mean, he has a whole different concept of how to proceed. I mean. It makes it tough. Yeah, I mean, so. I can't what proceed without the, the town administration supporting it. I have, I got that, but. You're showing us, are you, what do you specifically ask us? To endorse the article or what? So I can, I can tell you from CPC, from before right. you got on CPC, right. one of our requirements that predated even uh, me being on was that the board wanted any um, other committees and commissions that would have um, a piece of the permitting or a piece of the um, of the mm -hmm. project to 
give it support. Right. So last year we had, there were eight historic applications and even though some things like preserving historic documents in the town, um, in town hall weren't really our purview right. as a historic commission, we were asked to review the application. So I think some of that is, is what's driving mm -hmm. um, David to ask David right. to come here tonight. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm coming here tonight because the chair, Dave Nixon, said I should. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't 100% ready, but yet I submitted a CPC application without right. being completely ready either. This, he, he, I, I find myself defending a lot on this topic. Um, this report began, this study began in approximately June. Mm -hmm. We got a draft report um, in early October, mm -hmm. and that gave me just enough time to submit to right. CPC. We got a final report in December. So I would have made some changes to the CPC application. Right. What I'm hoping is that somehow, um, and here, whether I'm lobbying the two of you in, in <laughs> a way that's fair or not, I'm in public, so it's okay. Um, we, re we requested 130,000. Yeah. We now think that we should do the structural analysis and address the lead paint as much as possible and see if we can do that for $130,000. I don't know the CPC is going to let me move the money around. I'm not seeing any quick knots. I, 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 I can't, can't speak for everybody. I, I will say from my perspective, I said it at the last CPC meeting, to me, this building and the library are the two gems that, that bookend our historic district. Um, I personally am more concerned with the structural part. I am concerned mm -hmm. about the foundation. I am concerned about about the outside, obviously, the outside is our purview and is um, certainly important to keep it looking um, as best as can be. So I, I'm and that peeling side, this terrible advertising. It, 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 it certainly is, and, and maybe there's a structural reason inside for it. Um, from my perspective, those are the more – I'm more concerned about the damage that the water is doing to the building, and the longer that's put off, the the, the – bigger a problem you're going to end up having on the inside. But um, that being said, you know. The, the problem is with CPC, you know, you don't get anything now, then you start it again a year later. I right? understand. So, understand. Understand. so understand. I'm putting everything out there, letting your group mm -hmm. decide whether it's, so as far as what this group can do, this is the concept that we want to go forward with. Um, if you give it support tonight, that would be helpful. I suspect it'll prove to be an empty gesture, but I'm still hoping to get something. Okay. So my question is, are there any efficiencies or best practices that, that the town learned from everything that's taken so long on the library that could be useful, like the columns or how to fix the columns? Do you know? The, the main thing we're going to get from the library is, is the um, dealing with the lead paint. Right. That'll help us put together cost estimates and so forth. So that'll be a help. Uh, the columns, there may be something there from the library. I suspect it's a slightly different situation. Other than that, I don't think there's too much mm -hmm. uh, from the library. Any other questions, Julie? I do not. I mean, it'd be nice to have it brought back. To it's a original. beautiful building. It is it's beautiful. Um, Dale, anything? I really echo what you just said. It, it's the cornerstone of the, one of the cornerstones of the historic district, and it's a very important building, and, and that's where we should be concentrating a lot of our efforts and money as we did with the library. Well, and I think too, as you look at this whole downtown revitalization and such, I mean, yeah. it's a destination and you have to have a destination be safe and be appealing mm -hmm. looking in order for people to want to go there. So, I mean, I think from that perspective alone, the town should certainly think about putting some money towards that. Again, it's a it's a town owned building. It's again one of the one of the two remaining buildings in in the district, you know, of, of that the era, right? The originals. The originals. Mm -hmm. Um I am certainly in full support of the C P C money as 
when, when issues came up with the library and whether it was historic preservation, I said last year if the library project wasn't an appropriate use of historic preservation um, funds from CPC, I don't know what is. And I, think, and I feel comfortable saying the same thing as far as um, is concerned with this building, particularly when it comes to the foundation and the, and the exterior work. Um, I think tomorrow will be uh, interesting. I am, was not aware of the email from Sean and have not yet read it. Yeah. Um, so I will be curious to see what, what that has to say. Um, yeah, I forwarded that to, um, to the chair because, you know, Sean is supportive of the project. Mm -hmm. If he does mm -hmm. want to see the things that you just said, Mary, go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's any way that CPC can make that happen this year, I'll leave that up to the group tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's another whole meeting tomorrow night, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you have a specific recommendation you're going to make to the committee tomorrow? I mean, I'm not sure the CPC can develop things they well they i will say last week last week we did discuss uh, dave nixon did suggest um putting forward funds and For the having the the structural engineer uh, engineer look at right. the at the foundation first before everything mm -hmm. else i'm not sure um i'm not sure how um how else they're willing yeah. to go i mean and that's not a stretch from the proposal because i, don't I think mean it is no you know, to do that, but then... I don't think any of this is a stretch from the proposal. I mean, right. you know, the, uh, I, I think it's wonderful to see the front the front door reestablished. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the historical mm -hmm. perspective, that's Street how it... That right, entrance. that's yeah. how it was. Yeah. Yeah. That was the entrance. Right? Yeah. Um, I, think it, I think it's three good pieces to this. I think um, it's affordable. It's not going to be easy. I'm probably going to be seeking CPC money combined yeah. with um, cultural facilities grants. Whether we can get the cultural mm -hmm. facilities grant, I don't know. If not, it's a big chunk for CPC. I mean, this is going to be a multi-year project. Mm -hmm. Already has been, right, David? <laughs> <laughs> you started. I've, I've been doing this a year and a half, so. Yeah. You got that study going pretty quickly. You did. No, and I really appreciate the study. It's very thorough, and it gives a, a great plan for going forward, a strategic plan. It's, uh, I'm very impressed with that part of it. Give you something to start with at least. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, the only other thing I just wanted to mention I know you were talking about the inside may not be our purview. Uh, the only thing I will point out is that because it's a building over 100 years of age, right. our demolition delay bylaw contemplates any demolition. So we have been pretty consistent in including <laughs> any interior demolition as being included and in needing to come forward on a uh, demolition delay application. So I just point that out for yeah. consistency. Um, the 1927 section of the building would just slip under the 100 year limit. <laughs> so if we get those bathrooms cleared out quickly. So we actually don't, good. we actually don't, we consider if it, any part of the, the building, right. we don't separate it by, oh, by structure. We still um, have people come in for the whole. So, um, but it's taken into consideration. There's, there's a difference right. between, right, there's yeah. a difference between, um, you know, replacing like for like and and doing some kind of demolition. So I will say that. I also wonder if Sarah Korchak, has she spoken with her at all? And sometimes she has all these, this knowledge of all these grants, other Haven't grants yet. that are out there. She's been on she my list. She might be a good resource. Uh, what What is the board's purview? Do uh, Does the board want to take a, an action tonight to support the CPC yes, application? Mm -hmm. And in what form? I leave it up to you folks to tell me. Well, it would be most appropriate to put in front of, to take to the CPC a letter of some sort of a motion so it, whatever we decide tonight I, I can mm -hmm. certainly codify mm -hmm. it in a letter um, on our behalf for uh, submission tomorrow so that it's it's confirmed and on record um, it, the board can take whatever motion it chooses if you if you want to support in total the application if you want to support um, the 
the use of CPC funds for structural or exterior work or for the application is submitted, I will I'll leave that to you folks to, or even if you just want to generally support um, money going towards the building for, um, for use as others determine. But in, in terms of how the CPC would look at it, would they be more, more persuaded by something that's tighter and more uh, concise, or could we say something that we, we as a, as a commission support CPC funding uh, for the restoration and uh, work that's needed. I think you. I, I think CPC will will take however you you phrase it. Um, you know, if you if you want to say support the application that's submitted, if you want to say support the application um, or support the use of funds, in if you want to prioritize for outside versus inside. It's, it's really what the part yeah, of me is. Happy to say we, 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 we could it, be just very general that we support the yeah. um, report mm -hmm. and strategic. Um, and the use uh, of funds. Uh, and the use for the use of funds mm -hmm. to sure. support the, the uh, report. That kind of leaves it general because. But that also it, brings in the, um, the structure, right. the exterior paint. The right, mm -hmm. so it, it kind of puts it mm -hmm. all together. And then. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that. Is, is that more what you prefer, David, from us? I think that's good. I think okay. that's yeah, good. Yeah, I agree. All right. <laughs> because if we just supported, um, my feeling is that that paint, and then the problem with the internal ducts, the heat. I mean, it's almost like you have to get enough money to do the whole thing. In a, in a lot of because ways. otherwise, you. I see you're throwing money away, doing the paint issue without solving the internal problem. So I, I just yeah, think at it this has, point you should have it all. They've raised enough <coughs> questions about those air duct things that um, we can't do the painting again without knowing whether we need to do mm -hmm. it again. So they should give you everything. Oh, that <laughs> duct is only exactly. one in the center section of that east side. It's not throughout the whole side, right? right. It, uh, so the, the duct goes out. It takes a chunk out. You get some space back taking the ducts out. Well, there's some things that are not being used, so. Oh, they're not. No, you don't need them anymore. But, and they're also 1927. They're not okay. original to the building at all. So the chair would entertain a motion I, that the Historic yeah. Commission uh, supports the use of CPC funds um, to perform the work detailed in the report right. Right. Mm -hmm. for, for the Brooks Library and Museum? Academy. 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 Sorry. No, no library. The Brooks <laughs> Academy. Academy. Building. Building. Does that work for those mm -hmm. of us here? Do I, I make it? Then I think. Well, who will make the motion? Oh, I'll so yeah. move. So Gene will and make the motion. Can we have a statement in there that we also feel strongly that this is one of the two cornerstone buildings in the historic district? And that oh, we, we can put that in the letter, yes. yes. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Jean has made the motion. Julie has seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, it's unanimous. So I will, um, in accordance with that motion, uh, draft a letter for submitting tomorrow night to CPC um, along with the motions for the votes that we're preparing. Mm -hmm. Can we get a copy of the full report? Is it in via email? Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> you want to copy it? <laughs> I'd love it. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Because um, I didn't realize it was that big. It's, it's really good What's stuff. The best in there. address for me to send it to? Uh, Lane, maybe. Well, Lane you send, send it to Lane. Lane. She'll Lane distribute got it. it. She has. Okay. Oh, she so has the whole one. Yeah. yeah so, so she can just, just distribute it. Yeah. Thank you. I'll send her a note. Yeah, just email it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I hope, it, thank you. I hope you get it. <laughs> we will get this, whether it's going to be this year or next year. <laughs> no, no, it, it's. Hopefully, you get some this year. I hope so. <laughs> Ooh, did I tip my hand? <laughs> okay. The next item on our agenda is uh, review of the minutes from December 5th. 
Did I, everyone have an opportunity to take a look at them? Mm -hmm. Did anyone have any changes? I have one question. Okay. Page two, where it says, Ms. Carroll is interested to see if it would be possible to have a demolition delay not stay with the property. I thought we were looking to have it stay with the property. Too. No. Oh, okay. She, the, the way it is current is that if you get the demo delay and then you sell the property, the demo, the demo uh, permit runs with the property. Oh, I thought it, it expired. No, okay. it runs with the property. So I think um, mm -hmm. Gail's was to have, have upon it. transfer, have it expire. Right. And the new owners would have to come? The new owners back. would okay. have to come back. Perfect. That was the only question I had. Any other questions or comments or changes? I move that we approve the meetings of Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. A motion has been made by Mr. Doan to approve the minutes of December 5th. I'll Any? Second. Mrs. Steiner has seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, there is next on our agenda a <coughs> zoning board of appeals mm -hmm. agenda for January 30th. Uh, should be one. There are looks to be two applications. One is um, an application for a special permit to construct an additional to a pre existing non conforming single family dwelling at 16 Pine Needle Lane, which is not within the district and uh, I suspect is not over 100 years old. And then there is an application for a special permit to demolish and replace a pre-existing non-conforming two-family dwelling, um, which is at four Quaisom Lane. Any comments? And if none, then I would suggest we simply make a motion to accept this and place it on file. I move to do exactly that. <laughs> Accept the notice and place it on file. Motion's been made by Mrs. Carroll. Is there a second? I'll second. Mrs. Steiner has seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> now, for some reason, I do not have the revised applications in front of me. We're so that's at. that's for the demo delay. Oh, okay. Oh. I actually like the revised application. I do have some comments. Okay. On the uh, first plane, the first page application in a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, the the issue is this is both for historic district and historic commission and there are slightly different requirements. Mm -hmm. And under A, I think there should be, isn't there, should be some comment about what the landscaping and streetscape should be. So I think that's, that's true of our certificate appropriateness is only in the district. So I think you're right. I think it should say streetscapes. Mm -hmm. No, they're big yellow. Um, Did anything we put this else? One last, I printed them out. They were, Elaine had sent them. Oh, I missed that. I went to, I picked up my pack. Oh, here they are. <coughs> I think 
think that's a good point, Bob. And then C, of non-applicability on B. Uh, I think uh, material should be there. Change design, material, color, outward appearances. So it says that, doesn't it? Doesn't what am I missing? Warner repair of architecture features that damage to warn, but does not involve a change in design, color, and outward appearance. But if they you could, put like, materials. yeah, because they could say, "Oh, I got to use vinyl yep. instead of wood." Okay. And it has that language up above in, in the appropriateness one. Mm -hmm. Another thing with the certificate of appropriateness, to Bob's point with streetscape, it's also um, view from any public lane, mm. a public park, a public parking lot. Um, it's not just the front streetscape. If you can see it from a road behind it, right. that's included. Yeah. So, all right, so we'll tweak that a little. What date is on the bottom of your form? October 2018. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure the date was. Yeah, this is the original. I've stolen Gail's um, revision. Anything on page two? Again, just on A with what you're adding. Does that, uh, does that include landscaping? Or if you just say from any view from public space, that's really, it's still kind of referring to the building. And if we're, they're putting in fencing and stuff, that really does come under the purview. It does. Um, fencing definitely does. Not sure about about landscaping. I mean, we we always talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I would say until somebody tells us we can't. Right. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep until going. But we can add a slot in here. Can we, we re can we require certain kinds of landscaping? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. No, I, I haven't so. read through my whole thing yet. No, I think <laughs> so. Yeah. so we have porch and deck, but what about, um, don't know this. I mean, something like patio, would that fall under landscaping? How does that, I, you know, I keep going back at that house on Parallel Street where they did that horrible fence. And then the whole front yard is messed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> obviously they didn't check all the boxes. <laughs> but so let's so maybe let's call it landscape and and is it landscape and design or no we landscape design. features? Yes, that's the features. Okay. That kind of mm -hmm. and then we can put IE patio. Right. Walkways, fences. What about um, what the, what the we're talking about today um, for the Verizon building? Is I'm, I'm just trying to think of anything rooftop, uh, like widows' well, we've got sat We've got yeah, we've yeah. got satellite dish on here. But what about antennas? Um, and like a, a widow's walk. I mean, people do put fences up sometimes. So I think we've put satellite dish, antenna, yeah. um, roof accessory. Yeah, yeah maybe I mean, that's kind of like a broad. Yeah. Maybe but it's, it's um, true because yeah. people put design sometimes sculptures up but you there. Can't what's the word that I want though? No, no, no. What about what's the word I want? Cupulas? No. Um, for. Equipment that's on the roof. Oh, right. so yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, have air conditioning. They stuff do have something. utilities, but you're right. Equip. I think just equipment. Mm. Mm. 
with equipment and fixtures. Mm -hmm. And then I was, I was thinking sculptures, but that could be moved. What about permanent um, structures? structures, like sheds and oh. things like that? Do we have that on here? Well, that kind of comes. It's kind of accessory, dwell, accessory buildings. Yeah. But isn't accessory there something structures? here that talks about a separate? I mean, it says of a building or structure visible from a public space, so it's kind of, that's included. It should be, but we can put including but accessory structures. As a checklist, structures. yeah. Yeah. Anything else that we'd like to see on this? What does barrier-free access mean? Is that a it's ramp, essentially? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That would be your ADA accessibility mm -hmm. okay. issues. <coughs> if we um, are we in favor of this new applica revised application, I'll we'll ask to make some changes and circulate it at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Elena will be very happy. <laughs> I've postponed it a couple of times. <laughs> Um, all right, the next thing on our agenda is the demo delay bylaw. There are um, um, a couple of things that I just, yep. Yeah? Uh, we have the other application too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Don't mind me. What did I do? Is it? Should I do one and not the other? Yeah. I only yeah, have two. Just get the one. And he has, Brooklyn, do you have that? The one. This is, this is the, the application for notice of intent. Yeah, that's, that's updated Sorry. also. Oh, okay. I got it. Oh, okay. I just stole Gail's again. Thanks, Jay. So the one from October got updated. He needs another one from October. Oh, okay. Yep. So, okay. Right. Any issues on this one? I personally like the way section three is detailed to give us a little more detail on what they're exactly doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and I would actually like on under two, under the determination, I would like them to include where it says which records were used to establish this date I'd like to say include copies. Mm -hmm. And Gil, there's a typo on continue. Where? Uh, just at the top, section two, <coughs> where it says continue. That's not the right way to. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just a typo. Yeah. Okay. Did I say Gail? I meant Mary. <laughs> you did. Fine by me. Well, she's using Gail's material. I answered so yes. very appropriate. I'm using Gail's paperwork, so why not? There you go. So here's my only other, um, my only other suggestion. Because we've had so many uh, that have come in where people haven't filed the notice of intent and they're coming in to, um, to make their pitch that they are uh, exempt, that mm -hmm. they are not within the 100 year list. Right. Uh, I'm wondering if we shouldn't have a third application that is for that purpose. Because some people don't want to pay mm -hmm. the $55 that's to do the notice well, of intent. That's a good point. Some people do both at once mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they don't want to lose the time. Right. And some people just want to come in first and see if we're right. going to give them the waiver. So um, I'm going to ask if, if we're all agreeable, if mm -hmm. um, Elaine would draft up one 
that's a kind of a short version of the notice inten of intent. Right. It's kind of the first page. Like, what, right. what year was it built? What's the documentation that you have? Exactly. Right. And, I think that's great. And have you included mm -hmm. copies? Right. And then we'll at least have something to look at um, right. instead of uh, sometimes doing our own digging yeah. to help them mm -hmm. and yeah. sometimes them just not being able to, right. to uh, it's a great idea. bring it with us. So mm -hmm. if we're all amenable to that, I will ask to do that as well. Um, I didn't see anything on the notice of intent that, that jumped out at me um, mm -hmm. as needing changes as far as the new version is concerned. No. Does anybody else think differently? Nope. Remember, we did have a question when we had um, Ray Chesney at one of our meetings mm -hmm. because of the the home on Forest Street mm -hmm. went a little too far. Um, and we asked going forward if you would they would mark the card. Do we want to put something in there that um, we will require additional inspection? Was it additional inspections or something? We or could put that on the on the that be demo we there? Could, on the demo application okay. for the notice of intent. Mm -hmm. We can put in a statement that says. Um, uh, be notice notice to application to all applicants a uh, post demolition inspection will be required prior to uh, mm -hmm. a building permit okay. the issuance of the building permit. Right. Okay. So we can put that language in. And I mean, I don't know if it's worth it or not. I don't. I think um, it is. I think it is, and mm -hmm. we'll put that language in, and we'll flag it for we'll run it by um, Ray and Ken to make okay. sure they're okay with right. the way we phrase it. He suggested it, so yeah. it should be good. Yeah, okay. Just it should, yeah, I think it should as, a, be yeah. as a friendly reminder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, it's a friendly exactly. reminder. Yeah. And then <laughs> it won't be something that we're obligated to, I mean, we will, but we wouldn't be obligated exactly. to reiterate if it's on the Right, on and, the and form, therefore, right. if something point. has gone too far, you know. It's there. Yeah. That's a good point. So, okay. some minor changes to the two applications, draft a third. Um, I'll ask Elaine to do that uh, when I talk to her tomorrow. Um, next item on the agenda is really uh, to start talking about the demo delay by law changes. And Gail was lovely enough to get us some language that we can look at. Um, Gail, my first question is, do you know which town this came from? Brookline. did. Because I'd like to get my hands on their whole demo delay um, by I law just in, as a no, comparison I, to I our do own. I have that. Um, I'm right here. The one thing I wanted to point out in these amendments that, that Gail provided, um, their f the first paragraph, their definition of demolition is obviously significantly more defined than ours is. Oh, oh well, that's, that's a bylaw. There you go. <laughs> that's a bylaw. But it, <coughs> it's the bylaw prior to this change. This was just voted on in November, I think he okay. says. Mm -hmm. And I put a call into, what's this fellow who sent it? I think his name is Dennis. Um, yeah, Dennis DeWitt. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one who, I think he's obviously he's in Brookline, and he's the one who started the uh, okay. email chain, you know, on that mass his oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the big list. The list, sir. I never could remember the yeah. list. Yeah, I never could remember. So what I'd like to do is circulate. Um, I'll ask Elaine if she can email, scan this, and email a copy of both of these to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, because really looking at these changes in the context of their whole bylaw will be much more helpful mm -hmm. um, in looking at our own. Um, is there a way to get a copy for everybody? Oh, yes, yeah. Sir. Um, what I was going to try to do is get the updated yeah. so that everyone has mm -hmm. the bylaw mm -hmm. complete because there were more things, two mm -hmm. things were changed, not just the language. Mm -hmm. um, well, three things, I guess. Um, so this this whole page is the amendment, are, are the amendments that were um, voted on 
at town meeting. Oh, that's and great. it includes those three paragraphs. The second one that I, hi well, I highlighted it on mine. Yeah. The, that is the one that really contains the language about mm -hmm. non-transferable. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Which is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, yeah. Um, my, my one comment on the first, as far as the definition of mm -hmm. demolition, we are so broad in that demolition includes really cutting a hole in, a wall, in an interior wall mm. is considered demolition on ours. Um, so I would, s I, I'm not sure if that's, if ours is too broad. This is, is a, an excellent definition if, if we wanted to go that route. Um, but I would just suggest that when we're looking, when you're looking at this, when you're not just tonight, but, mm -hmm. but after tonight, when you're looking at this in the context of how it's different from ours, um, theirs yeah. is, is clearly, is clearly lengthier than ours, just in general. Um, and, uh, when it comes to um, to that definition, just think about whether whether we think we're we're in overkill at this point, or whether that's something that we'd like to move towards. Yeah, the the issue I see here is that um, somebody just replacing a window would not have to come before us. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but so just replacing just replacing a window now, if it's like for like, they don't have to right anyway. Right. But if, if it's different, a correct. slider, putting in a slider instead of a correct. couple windows, it still falls under 25% probably. Most likely it does. Yeah. Most likely it does. So, and obviously they have a reason for going this route. We, I'm sure, had a reason for going our route. So, um, and I don't disagree with you on that. To me, if you're changing uh, the look of a historic building, I maybe want to see the change in the window. Right. But um, they do have to come before us because the application isn't, isn't this application certificate of appropriateness? Don't they have to? That's in the historic district. Oh, yeah. oh this yeah, is yeah, for yeah. the general but delay, not, but right? isn't this for a hundred? No. no, that's the notice of intent. Over hundred? Yeah. Nope, that's the notice of intent. Oh, so yeah. okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So in a historic Somehow district, they had to in the historic district, we always mm -hmm. have purview. In for houses hundred mm -hmm. years of age, mm -hmm. we we only have the purview over the demolition. Okay. All right, um, but You're we right. do have the ability to yeah. for them to. I was getting. Greedy. They are supposed to come to us for replacement of windows. Um, I, I do want to say one thing. Uh, the language. This email has been going around since November. I mean, to added mm -hmm. to it, and his statement was last night. The town meeting unanimously passed this bylaw amendment, um, terminating blah blah blah. He said, this amendment, together with some other definitional clarifications relating to partial demolition, was drafted by a subcommittee of the commission with input from two local real estate attorneys, town council, and the building commissioner. So that world kind of, which made it simple to present to town meeting and a unanimous well, vote. And that's was Brookline, right? And that's Brookline. It, that's it was Brookline, right? but you yeah, know, I mean. Yeah. Right. Well, it's also a practicality. The book line is so big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just overwhelming if everybody came for every exactly. little thing. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. that's not the same issue with us. No, but it was it was a in, good. Okay. In section two, to work on. the one I think I'm seeing, um, the only issue is um, many houses, I think they're contingencies. It's a contingency purchase if they can get approval to tear it, it down. Uh -huh. I don't think that covers this year. I think they were trying to, and I, because I, I think they were trying to. Because I thought it actually did when I first. No, I don't think it does. Might be the, it might be an exemption that we didn't capture. It might be further on in there. Okay. Mm. Um, because it references an exemption. Mm. 
Okay, it says notwithstanding the foregoing, the commission has pursuant to its discretion voted to lift a stay based on a design submitted by a previous owner of the building commissioner in conjunction with the preservation commission staff may approve and issue the demo permit without having the new owner file a mm -hmm. new demolition permit application for that prior design. So that yeah. may be the exemption. Yeah. But I'm not sure without reading, yeah, reading we have the to thing read in that. total. But the problem, what we don't want is a um, owner just coming in and getting a demolition permit and then putting the house up for sale well because he has or it. maybe not until waiting and that well because they, they last forever with the original owner but right. this is based on the design this is this reads to me like it's based on a design that's submitted right mm -hmm. so it's that's based on a design right, yeah. submitted by a previous owner so if the current owner comes in and says you know this is what i'm putting in its place and it's based on that design they're saying and there's a change in ownership they're saying the new owner can build what was already approved if they're building the same design. I think that's the exact that's exemption. That's how I'm reading. Yeah, that, I think that's how I'm reading. I so I'm gonna. Oh yeah. I don't yeah, know if I'm I gonna sell you. my house, but I, I decide I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I want to demo it. This is what I'm gonna put it okay. in its place. I present it to you, and six months down the line, I decide you know what, a house came up on two streets <laughs> over, and I'm gonna move there, and I'm gonna sell mine. You're gonna build if you want to build exactly what I s already got the permit yeah, yeah, for, no, no, then no, you're exempt. I, 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 under, yeah. I think that, that's that what makes covering. sense, but that doesn't sound, but that doesn't really cover what I was bringing up. You're talking about uh, a with a contingency subject sale. To, yep. Now, I mean, I don't, I, I think that's fine, but it, it goes with the only the new owner, the contingency, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not with the original owner, and it's mm -hmm. the new owner's responsible mm -hmm. for executing yeah. in that case. I don't know if that's somewhere, maybe that's somewhere in one of the exemptions. It, it, it might be, mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, hard to, it's hard to know without looking at it in total versus, um, and ours is just structured very differently and ours right. is um, not as detailed right. in its current state. Ours was based on Concord, I think. I don't Salem. know. It was, oh, Salem. Salem, Salem. Right? Salem, yeah. I don't know. Which was very long time ago. <laughs> so. Yeah. Any other comments about those changes? I, I like, I really yeah. liked that mm -hmm. middle draft. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to do for the for the next go around, I definitely want to look at this, and then I want to do a marked up version of our existing mm -hmm. with some of these potential changes. Yep. If that's agreeable to people. Very agreeable. Um, take a stab at it. Issues that that any of you um, are concerned with having looked at our existing one. Turn the light. I I personally would like to clear up um, 131 section eight to make it a little more clear that. Um, that it's not just 100 year old buildings, but um, historically significant buildings of any age. We talk about it in 131.7, and I don't think we fully capture it in 131.8. So that is a section I would like to. In to other words, go less than 100 up. years if it's historically significant? I think that's what's contemplated hmm. by the section above it. Uh, it wasn't captured in the next hmm. section. Um, because I don't know what the point is in talking about historically significant buildings and having A, B, C, and D without capturing that in in the notice of intent. Can you look at one? Do you have it? I don't. Yeah. I'll look at it. Again. I think it's a simple. I think it's a simple fix. And I think it was the original intent. So, Mayor, you're talking about 131. Seven. seven. Okay. 131.7, there are four categories of how right. we, oh. and we didn't, and it should be a defined term um, in, in the, the bylaw should have created the defined term that A, B, C, or D is a defined term of a yeah. historically significant building. 
And then instead of where it says 100 years in, in Section 8, I think it should say a historically significant building. Um, you know, if. Yeah. Are there going to be some that are, that are less than 100 years old? Maybe, maybe not. But um, to me, that's just, I think, I think that was the intent. Because you wouldn't have A, B, C, and D in different categories if your intent wasn't to capture that later on. Um, Wait, yeah, because I think I'm trying to think of the how it was Moran. Moran, when she came in, she was talking about bungalows, mm -hmm. and they were um, built in 1920, and so they don't fall into this category, and yet they're architecturally sig not all. But yeah. there are some that are architecturally significant, even though they're less than a, you know, mm -hmm. a year or two less than a yeah. hundred years. But how do you police that? What? How do you police that? Well, that's our determination, right? It's our determination as the board. It, we're the ones that are making this, this determination as to whether something's listed on a historic register. Right. Whether something is associated with a historically noteworthy person. Right? We're going to... That would be us putting it, putting something on the list for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, oh, having see. an architectural, so having we some would predetermine this mm -hmm. and put it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I get it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, so it's how it section seven is how things get on the list. Mm -hmm. Section eight is that anything on the list okay. has to come before us as a for a notice right. of intent before mm -hmm. demolition. And the, the issue that I see in reading it is right now, it's limited to 100 years. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Whereas I think the intent was oh, to I capture more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so who would else? create that list? You would. We do. We have a list okay. now. And, um, you know, if there are, if there are things that, that we put on it or if there are, um, um, for some reason, somebody petitions us to put something on a list mm -hmm. because person X lived there, yep. mm -hmm. then, um, then we could do that to put it on our historically significant list. I think that's our determination to include it on our list. I'm just trying to think of the mechanics of that. I mean, I, I, I understand the mechanics of maybe determining it, but then what is an owner's recourse if they find out that we're going to put their property on, do they have a chance to s argue that it's not? So um, I would think they would. Mm -hmm. I think we're the ones that create that list in the first place. Right. Our list is, well, one, it's based on National Historic Register right. or mm -hmm. the state register, right? Mm -hmm. So that's part of the, the condition. And that, that's easy right? because it's on a list. but. If it's historically significant because of a person, place, or mm -hmm. thing, that's not going to be on a list, maybe. It, well, it, it's not going to be automatic, right? Right. There'd be, there wouldn't be that many. No. I mean, but right. of those that would be on that list, let's say that there might be two or three. I, I think the opportunity the owner would have would be the same as the opportunity an owner has to say, my house isn't 100 years old. And no, no, I agree. Know, I just so don't know what that if so that think, process is. I lined think that up third here. category that, that that Mary asked right. about mm -hmm. create a, an application. Mm -hmm. th mm -hmm. That's what would happen. They'd come forward with the application and just have some discussion. Right. And you know, it's a, a situation where and, and maybe maybe I'm wrong in reading this. I'm reading it again, and I'm and it's saying constructed prior to a hundred years before the present calendar year. I think it really applies more to, because as as time goes on, that mm -hmm. particular architectural value, I mm -hmm. think, is, is the one that would be more mm -hmm. important, perhaps, than mm -hmm. who lived there, like mm -hmm. Lincoln slept in the right. <laughs> second bedroom. <laughs> but that architectural style, as, as time goes on, we may jump into like the next five or mm -hmm. 10 years, and all of a sudden, it's determined that something that was prevalent during the 1930s is, absolutely, you know, that's a absolutely. huge thing. Yeah. So um, I think that. I'm going to rescind my comment. 
and say that I'm rereading this. And I think it's I think it's only a hundred. Mm -hmm. And these are our determinations on each on whether we think it's a whether it's significant at the date of the notice of intent. Okay. I'm gonna change my mind. And yet I've just convinced myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can all change our minds. <laughs> because I'm looking at things that so initially reading A, B, C, and D, and we talk about them all the time because we do them whenever we do a notice of intent. But I'm thinking of those things as also that there are some that are less than 100 years that are on the National Historic Register. Well, those and should be, yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and this doesn't contemplate that because this is actually saying 100 years plus. Right. right. And I was reading it as it's either or. So apologies But we may want to add that, though. If it's on the store, so there's, so there, so there lies the rub. We can change it and make it and make it um, an or, mm -hmm. um, if we want. I guess I've always um, thought it should be an or, but mm -hmm. mm, maybe I'm coloring my own judgment. I don't know. But exactly, how how would you police it? So let's say somebody goes to sell their home, or buy, I mean, how would that? Oh, we we would know if it's on a historic right. place. We would have to look at the historic list, all the Howard twins and put them in our database if they're right. even if they're less than 100 years old. And they and, and that's, that's not too many. So. And that's what we've done every time the right. list has been updated. And let's say all of a sudden 20 years from now someone comes up with this oh, we can't let these particular types of poems go down the tubes and they were very, you know, prevalent during this particular time of 1920 2025 all of a sudden bung bungalows are going to be 100 years old and this year's this year's yeah. home that came that came out. Well, I know it's you know, how many are left yeah. and there But I know Miranda was arguing that maybe we should move that up. Well, she, she was trying to say less than make it less than 100 years. Yeah, some, yeah. some towns do have like a 75 year old. Some do. Five. That's a bit much. But I think. that would kind of that paragraph C would if it was or, if this or these things, then right. paragraph C would take care of what she was saying. If uh, the commission decides that that's a significant architectural style that we have to We also had a gentleman preserve. before us that said, um, you know, at some point the houses built in the 50s are going to be 100 years old, and really are they historically significant? Well, when I'm not going to be around to see that. <laughs> but, well, <some laughs> but they no, will Bob, be. you might but be. You never know. <laughs> Some might be. No, so <laughs> I, I mean, devil's advocate playing both both sides of it. Well, um, looking at my house built in '85, it's a, it's your standard hmm. Casey home. <laughs> <call. laughs> Unfortunately, the quality that is being used during that period of time and forward probably they'll fall apart to tear. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> work this year. Um, so it all changes with time, I'm sure. So exactly. then, I guess my the next tact in this, I'll get this circulated. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll see if there's any way, I don't know if they can convert it to make the changes. If we can convert it to a Word doc and make, make those changes mm -hmm. um, in it, we'll PDF, try and do that. Well, PDF, if they, if they have the software yeah. Yeah, you to, need to, to convert it to Word, I which might they might have. And sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it I doesn't. Um, so we can try that, um, and we'll circulate that, and then... Um, compare it to ours and see if there's anything mm. in addition that we want to add in. Uh, I know Brendan was not able to attend tonight and he was, um, did express his interest in really wanting to mm -hmm. to be involved in this as well. And as I said, we're not gonna do this in one night. <laughs> no. Um, and obviously this, none of these changes no. would make this town meeting anyway. So um, we have plenty of time to, to work on them. And I would also suggest, um, from CPC standpoint, if uh, there is anything that this board would like to um, submit its own CPC application Absolutely. for next year, then that is something we should start thinking about now, mm -hmm. because October comes up awfully quick. Sure. So I would raise that as well. Thank you. Oh, you can keep that. Um, Anything else on that, uh, where we are now? Nope. Demo? All right. So we'll get those circulated. CPC update. Bob, you want to go for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As uh, the only one article um, which you heard about tonight. So mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> the only historic uh, 
it's the only historic preservation um, article before us. Mm -hmm. Eight applications. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't, let me just ask a question about that. I know that uh, David was talking about the preservation of the document, whatever articles, artifacts, mm -hmm. documents, what have you, in that climate-controlled room. Mm -hmm. And th and then he went on to other things. Well, wasn't historic money used to create the safe location wherever it was over in, um, wasn't it the community center? Oh, and that was town? for town documents. Right, town documents. So but that these aren't property of the town. These are property of the historical society. But they were still historic. Separate entity. Not, mm -hmm. not for profit yeah. or something like it can that. Still be, yeah. we can, they still can be used, yes. Right. Well, I'm just saying for, as far as for support, mm -hmm. like CPC money was used, and it, mm -hmm. it was historic oh, oh, yeah, money yeah. used for that purpose. And oh, so I don't think there's any like question of that. It's kind of no, well, there was, no, like there was like question of that last year. There was a significant discussion right, okay. over that. But However, I'm, it did get passed. I would also oh, think that with a museum, they probably have a lot of, Clothing well, that's and, it, yeah. And larger that's what, artifacts right, no, there's, that there's can all, be there's stored. The, and totally different, yeah, not just yeah. straight they records. Sometimes need something. bigger spaces. As far as is in support of using it to do the historic preservation or to do the room for historic preservation, I think there is precedent from last year that, right. that mm -hmm. they can argue. Um, but as you can tell from the report, <laughs> there's significantly more work than than just what they've asked mm -hmm. yeah. for money from and um, it's an old building I mean it wasn't all right. right. and it should and be he, he wanted he wanted they chip away at like the, the right. library did and instead one, of doing one, everything all at once well and it, and i mean it's a kind of window dressing for the town but it's important window dressing i mean it's it's, it's also um in i didn't think to to mention it while they were here but we did confirm at the last CPC meeting last week that, you know, that's currently under a lease with the um, with the historic society, mm -hmm. and that lease I believe is expiring this this mm -hmm. year or oh, the last year. Oh, yeah. So oh. The, the town yeah, owns it. Oh, I didn't know. So the town yeah. owns it, and um, and the historic society is yeah. leases and it. And the background to that, as I understand it, is that at town meeting they voted to allocate that building for a museum. And then they went out and found someone to run the museum, which was the Howard Historical Society. Interesting. So in theory, some other group could come in at the renewal and sure. say, I want to run the his historical museum for Howard, I think, mm -hmm. you know, as a Yeah, it could be anybody probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not anybody, but. Right. Oh, but then it depends on who no, owns it. But it has to be for how which artifacts. Right. right. So yeah. it's but kind of difficult. Who owns, who owns, right. the, who owns the artifacts? Uh, the historical right. society. It's I believe. Absolutely. They on do. everything. Absolutely. I believe it's a society that owns the right. artifacts. So, huh. so that Very being said, um, <clears throat> that's another whole that. layer yeah. on the process that, mm -hmm. that I'm sure is getting started based on, uh, because I did ask mm -hmm. that question last week, and, and David did say that they were in the process of. Looking at it because mm -hmm. I was trying, I was trying to get confirmation on the trustees or the commission's um, role. And as he said, he's got to work with town administration because so they're a town commission. So if we're looking at a cultural district in Harwich, mm -hmm. I mean, certainly Brooks Academy Museum would be interesting. Mm -hmm. We've got mm -hmm. everything going on at the middle school, which mm -hmm. by all, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Report seems to be just stellar it now. Is. Booming. It's yeah. Amazing. What whatever happened with Albo House? Are we doing is anything going well, on? Well that's there? in the isn't that the cultural district actually goes from Brooks Library to the museum? It's almost like an overlay of the historic I, I district. I believe so. it does. So I think it's included now. But I believe is it anybody does. in there? What is so it's just, office yeah. space right yeah. now. Just office yeah. space? And um, C P C did grants, I believe it was twenty five hundred dollars to do a a structural review mm -hmm. um, that, if memory serves, was um, somebody doing it at, mm -hmm. at uh, severely discounted rates for us yeah. to give us an idea of what um, what the deal is in the building. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that if that has been done yet. That was part of last year's um, CPCs, and I don't think those funds were yeah. available probably until post July. So I'm not so sure where I that mean, when the when report Jill stands. and I were in there looking at records when, when um, David showed that 
can go record store and let me think of the day that you and I went and I mean there were just records all over the place in downstairs the kitchen, and in the downstairs. kitchen mm -hmm. oh in that little hallway off the kitchen but that first floor I, I, I don't think anything turned under it was no. so well preserved it I really mean it's is. just a beautiful example of what a house of that period it is would look like and it just it would be nice if somehow that could be tied I don't know if there's any way to tie it to to the academy but that's this is a house at a time period when mm -hmm. Harwich was doing such and such mm -hmm. we suggested using it to function for events yeah. like the mm -hmm. garden I mean Brady club was yeah, yeah. Or just tea or something yeah. but didn't have a but you know, maybe the time is maybe it's a better time for that now. Maybe that I don't know. The, I think, I think the it's off, I think it's office space over there right now. Yeah, she's yeah, on the first floor. Well, she's up she's here. Up, she's, she's, upstairs upstairs though, right? she's upstairs. She's upstairs. I was on your services yeah. committee, so they've we always, would meet it's over always there. been office space upstairs. Yeah, it's yeah. been yeah. actually yeah. used. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of tenants are up there too. Mm -hmm. Right. Professionals. I mean, it's but it would be nice. I mean, the Garden Club does such a great job with things in. The town. It would be nice, like if they, if there was just things there. Wouldn't that be a great place to? Yeah. The downstairs. Yeah. That would be neat. Yeah. It's on the list. Get that big. Get <laughs> that <laughs> <in. It's> <laughs> on the list for next. For next. Um, Oops, I keep talking to my book. But I did find. I found the Falmouth map, and I did um, look at some other uh, town historic district maps from across the country, not just in Fantastic. Mm. So I have that, so at some point we can mm -hmm. talk about that. That'd be great. Um, nothing else to report on. Planning is doing our usual thing. We're reviewing an accessory dwelling unit um, <coughs> bylaw that we just sent back to the Board of Selectmen, I think, for a further review. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to report other than what Bob said about CPC. Tomorrow night we are voting on our eight applications. Six o'clock. I don't know if it's in this room or the room next door. I but think it's Griffin room. I, yeah, I think I think okay, East I Coast is Griffin room, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Um, because there's the Howard Center Initiative meeting as well. Uh, so yeah. which starts at five thirty, and we st and CPC starts at six. <laughs> so. Um, if anybody's interested in coming to CPC and seeing what's going on and where the money is going, if the money is going anywhere and if it's getting spent, six o'clock tomorrow night. Um, other than that, I think we're nothing else. Move to adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. 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 <laughs>